Welcome to Sweet Auburn Stories, the storytelling series where we highlight iconic black pioneers. I'm your host and novice historian, Royce Babel. I'm joined today by the legendary Dr. Lonnie Johnson. Dr. Lonnie Johnson was raised in Mobile, Alabama, and he's been a resident of Atlanta since the early 90s. As an early high school student during the height of the civil rights movement, Lonnie invented his first robot. He's a double grad of Tuskegee University with degrees in mechanical and nuclear engineering. Professionally, he's a former NASA engineer, U.S. Air Force officer, holds over 140 patents, and is the founder of three companies creating revolutionary technologies. He's most widely known as the inventor of the Super Soaker water gun, an idea that came to him in the bathroom while tinkering on another project. Since its launch, it has generated several billion dollars in retail sales and remains a top-selling toy worldwide. Lonnie is a member of the National Inventors Hall of Fame. How are you today, Dr. Johnson? I'm good, thank you, I'm just fine. Can I call you Lonnie? Call me Lonnie. Great, so Lonnie, Lonnie, Lonnie. <laughs> Let's jump right in with wordplay, the rapid fire game where I say a word and you have to tell me what it means. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, <laughs> he has not seen this word, these words before. All right, George Washington Carver, so that's three words. Great, great inventor. Great inventor. Great inventor, great creator, very um, smart man, and devoted to his work. Yeah, are you smarter than George Washington? <laughs> <laughs> you can be honest, do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> Andre 3000. Andre 3000. You know who that is? Yeah. Outcast. Oh, I'm not a... <laughs> oh yeah, so oh, you I know, know you... Yeah. Um, I know you're a music guy. Yeah. You do like I music. do know Outkast. Yeah. yeah, so he's one of the two. Legacy. Oh, geez. Living your life, you know, worthwhile way. Mardi Gras. Fun. Fun. <laughs> now, I had no idea that Mardi Gras was founded in... Mobile. Correct. That's right. Standardized testing. Ooh, ooh. Bummer. Bummer. Bummer, yeah. Why is yeah. it a bummer? Well, you know, when I was in high school, you know, with knowing that I wanted to become an engineer, a society, junior engineer, technical society, the Jets, you know, big deal. And they sponsored a test to identify students who had potential for becoming engineers. Okay. And I, you know, I took the test, and when, and I was all excited. The results came back, and they discouraged me. They told me I shouldn't try. Maybe I should try being a technician instead. Wow. Yeah. I started building my robot that you may have heard about. Um, when I was in the 11th grade, and it took me about a year to build him. The final uh, competition for that robot was held at the University of Alabama, and it was being sponsored by the Junior Engineering Technical Society. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I told you you couldn't be in. Yeah, and yeah. I won first place. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. What I do believe in is inspiration and, ah. and build confidence in, you know, in a child, young person, and um, they have confidence, they will persevere and they will solve problems and seek their own destiny. Yeah. So I really believe in building self-confidence. I agree with that, I agree. The 90s, I'm a kid of the 90s, I love the 90s, the 90s were great, the best, the best decade in my opinion. Um, what do you think of the 90s? Toys. Toys. That's when I was in the toy business yeah, in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Super Soaker came out, uh, in 1991, um, in 92, it was the number one selling toy in the world. Yeah. When Super Soaker was successful, Laramie started putting other product in the line that didn't you know, use my technology, so uh, they didn't pay royalties on it. So, oh, that's the way that works out. <laughs> yeah. So when I did the Nerf Dark I said, look, this is gonna be really successful, and I wanna have my own subcategory on a Nerf and anything you put under that brand subcategory, you pay royalties on. I said, okay. And so we got the deal, we got it on. And sure enough, um, Nerf, the InStrike product line was my line and it became very, very successful. And sure enough, they started putting other things under there. And I said, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> You're not paying royalties. Right. He says, oh, Mr. Johnson, you're misinterpreting the contract. Oh, no, I'm not. Right. 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 <laughs> that went back on and on, back and forth for a while. and. Eventually, you know, I ended up filing a lawsuit. Some people may know how that turned out. Yeah. You read, read, you know, I won the lawsuit. It was yeah. a nice payout. Yeah. And I got it. Yeah, yeah. So I had more money to invest in my energy research. Right. 
Right, that's great, that's great. So, you know, one of my words was not, you know, run me my money, but that's what, I, you know, that's what I'm gonna say is the last word and I'll say what it means. It means what you did. You know, it means you told them to run you your money. And that's wordplay, folks. Thank you. Thank you. What do you remember about segregation? Well, you know, I remember um, as a kid, we'd be playing in the street in front of our home in our neighborhood. But whenever we saw a police car, we would all run and hide. Um, I remember... We still do that now. <laughs> unfortunately, some things yeah. are, are difficult to, to change. I remember one Christmas, um, my grandmother bought me a bicycle. And it was a... 10-speed bicycle, the only 10-speed bicycle I had ever seen in nobody in my neighborhood, no, none of the other kids we played with had ever seen a 10-speed bicycle uh, with the school. And I remember riding home from my, from my home, my mother's house, to my grandmother's house one night, one evening, and um, I saw this car turning down the street coming behind me. And I started, as a kid, started to imagine, suppose that car was after me, boy, my bike gets so fast, I could never catch <laughs> right. me. And so I was riding real fast, and then I turned, and the car came and turned again behind me, and then I turned again, and the car turned again, I'm like, oh, then I, I realized that he was really chasing me. Oh, wow. And so he was almost up on me, and I realized that um, I wasn't gonna make it to my grandmother's house, so I turned off the street, and uh, turned around and started heading back home to my mother's. And he went down to the corner, turned around and came back behind me again. And I got within a half block of my, um, my home and he was on me again. And so I had no choice. I jumped off my bike and I ran up this hill. And if you've ever been in a bunch of bushes that had stickers and you oh, yes. on your, on your and my legs were burning. I was hiding down in these bushes. I was maybe 10 feet away from them. My bike was at the curb, but I was in these bushes. They couldn't see me and they were pointing me. He went up the hill somewhere, you know, they all got out of the car. And um, then he got back in the car and left. I stayed there a while. And then after I was sure they were gone, I got on my bike and went on home. But, you know, that was just the way of life, you know, uh, riding on the back of the bus, you know, the color only signs, you know, white was, all of those things were just a, a way of life. I, you know, I, I grew up literally afraid of white people. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so let's get something a little lighter. Um, <laughs> uh, so you created your first robot, your first robot, Linux, as a ju Linux? Linux, Linux, yes. as a junior in high school, correct? That's correct. All right. And it won first place at the what? science fair. Um, when does one say they are an inventor? Is it when know. you've invented something that I mean, wins or well, can I? I want to be an I want to be an <laughs> Is this something I can? <laughs> well, everybody's an inventor. Okay, that's what I was saying. Yeah, everybody's to an inventor. Everybody's creative. We, it's what human beings do. We solve problems and we're really, really good at it. Yeah. So there's a story that I've read that is in uh, lore, in Lonnie Johnson lore, uh, that says you almost burnt down your house. Yeah. making something. It and I imagine it's the rocket, rocket fuel. fuel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would imagine one, one almost burns down their house when doing that. So is Linux your current password to any of your devices now? Actually, my, my email address is iLinux. Is it? Yeah. What about the password? That's not just the, okay, no. Okay, okay that's fair. All right, all right. So you've been in Atlanta since 1991. That's before the Olympics, you know, and all of that jazz, okay? So what do you think is the biggest difference between Atlanta then and Atlanta now? Dr. Irons, Dr. Ed Irons had told me about um, like true economic development where he described, you know, it's one thing to trade goods within a community and provide services to each other within a community um, and bring product into the community, which means you're purchasing and you're shipping your wealth out. It's so another thing we can produce a product within your community and ship that product out and bring wealth in. And so I want to create manufacturing jobs. And so Grady Homes was there, Capital Homes was there. I set up my laboratory, I actually started getting, buying equipment to do manufacturing actually. And we licensed this battery technology from Oak Ridge National Laboratory. We set up to start producing it. They actually talked about how great it was and how it was gonna be the next thing in batteries. 
And it turned out that you could not man mass manufacture the battery technology that they had. So I literally focused on a R&D program to develop solid state battery technology. So that's the research and, and that's what we're doing in the laboratory. In the meantime, Capital Homes is no longer there. You know, um, Grady Homes is no longer there. So those projects uh, are gone and that area has been developed uh, tremendously. You know, there's a new Capitol building. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's just everything has just changed. But there's still a real need for economic development. So I started designing this um, new type of air conditioning system that wouldn't use pistons and all of this stuff and with the compressors. And I wanted to use a Bernoulli effect. It's an engineering principle. You know, I won't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it required high velocity stream of water. So I machined these nozzles and I was they hooked these. This is this is my this is this is what I was doing in the evening. When the super soaker idea came. Well, yeah. So. I had these nozzles hooked up to the bathroom sink and um, I shot the stream of water across the bathroom and it was so satisfying. And, you know, yeah. how, I said, geez, a toy water gun would be a lot of high performance, high powered water gun would be a lot of fun. So right. I told my daughter I was gonna make a water gun that was like nothing that anybody else had ever had. And the rest is history. But my thinking was that I could earn enough money from the toy because I had other inventions and ideas that I had been working right. on. But I couldn't get anybody to invest in them or understand them. Either. Okay. <laughs> so I thought I could get enough money from the toy to actually go and work some of the real Which you did. <laughs> <laughs> that that, that kind of happened, right? It kind of happened. Kind of happened. <laughs> okay, good. And you know, I had you know, and I felt that I had a gift because I can actually see things, machines and complicated things and Imagine each little part and how it interacts with the other. Mm -hmm. Even the water gun, I actually figured the whole thing out. But then I had to sit down and machine each component and then assemble it and glue the whole thing together. Right. And then, so it took a few weeks before I actually saw the first water gun work, but I saw it working here. In your head. In, in magic. So it's like the closest thing to magic I can think yeah. of. Yeah. So your, your <laughs> invention, the super soaker, has generated several billion dollars. And do you think that your company will be worth $1 billion one day? Well, the investor in the key to it, like the converter technology, you know, we talk about and we talk to our investors, it's gonna be a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. And these guys say, no, if this is successful, it'll be worth trillions, trillions. So we, we that's a pretty... Um, that's a hefty sum. Yeah, that's a, well, that's a... <laughs> You know, no, like no pressure, right? No pressure, no, <laughs> no. no pressure at all. So I, I saw online that you were worth $320 million. Are those things right? No. No, okay, okay. My personal question. <laughs> if you could take back one invention of today, what would it be? Take back? Yeah, if, you, if there was something you wish was never invented. Oh, wow. I never thought about it that way. I know. Um, I don't think I'd take back anything. Really? No. No. Okay. I can't think of one thing, quite honestly. I mean, you can think about it. The tool and the cell phone and the rock have a lot in common. I, this is what I talk to kids, you know, and I tell them, I say, you know, tell me what these two things have in common. Mm. Um, I'll tell them the first thing, all right, mm -hmm. is, is that they're both minerals from the earth. The other thing, silicon, you know, yep. Sand, rocks, you know, right. literally that's what you use to make glass and silicon, semiconductors, uh, minerals from the earth. The other thing they have in common is the human brain, because it took the human brain to go from the rock over the, over the many years, a few years, yeah, right. to the cell phone. You all have one, what are you gonna do with yours? Yeah. So do you have a single piece of incredible business advice? The reality is that Every business is different. The problems you're going to run into, there's no real recipe. There's right. No, no straightforward. What's, what the key is, another thing I tell kids, and when I'm talking to younger kids, I tell them, hey, look, there's magic in the world. There is really, really magic. And yeah. when you run into a tough problem, you have to use this magic word, perseverance. Ah. Uh. And that's the key to business. This has been Sweet Auburn Stories, the storytelling series where we highlight black pioneers. I wanna say a big thank you to my guest, Dr. Lonnie Johnson, or as his friends like to call him, Lonnie. 
Thank you for being legendary. Thank you for being black. And thank you for being in Atlanta. Thank you. I enjoyed this.